What were members of Congress told about interdimensional beings in the David Grush skiff, or at least the skiff with the David Grush material? Well, let's talk about that in a whole lot more. It's time for another UFO News Roundup, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, let's just get right to it. This is from Project Unity. Skiff briefed Congress members are referencing angels and demons a lot uh, because they are being told it is an interdimensional phenomenon that has inspired the formation of world religions. Wow. Okay, so that it kind of goes back to what Tom DeLong has been saying all along about uh, the Greek gods and, you know, how the, the Greek gods may have been real in a sense, or at least uh, the beings that were here at the time inspired uh, the creation of the Greek gods or the religion based around them. And maybe they were even acting in similar ways. And there is, uh, you know, stories about how there may even have been Greek or Greek-like hieroglyphics in some of these UFOs. And, of course, it goes way beyond Greece and the uh, ancient Greece religions. But we have only to look at the Chris Bledsoe story to see that maybe some of this stuff is still playing out today. Chris Bledsoe is interacting with a being, a goddess-like being, who may be Hathor, uh, the Egyptian entity or a deity Hathor, um, or a being representing herself as Hathor, or the being that inspired the creation of the myth of Hathor. So, uh, you know, what other uh, gods or beings are real or what uh, mythology could be inspired by real beings? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Obviously, a lot of this is speculative, if not almost all of it, uh, but it is certainly intriguing and possibly important. I myself have had my own Jesus event. And if you're curious about that, go to my playlist under my experiences and go to my Jesus Ayahuasca UFO. And no, I wasn't on Ayahuasca when I saw the UFO, but it is part of the story. So check it out if you have a mind. But yeah, what part do you think the phenomenon has played in world religions? Meanwhile, check this crazy story out. Shocking new evidence shows the Miami Mall incident occurred in 2023, a year ago. Obviously, it's not the exact same incident, but it's a very similar incident that occurred in January 2023. Uh, three teens were arrested after Bayside Mall, uh, Bayside Marketplace chaos. Uh, and uh, police, I think there were dozens of police vehicles that showed up uh, in, in a very similar way to arrest these, uh, these teens. And I think there may have been shots fired. Uh, of course, uh, we're, we're told it was dozens. We're not told it was a hundred or more. So I'm not thinking it was quite the same, uh, but it was certainly a, a very similar in incident in a similar place, a similar time of the year. Weird story. Don't know what to make about, about it. Let me know what you think. Meanwhile, here's an update on the alleged uh, Virginia alien footage posted by Ronnie Vernet. Uh, he says, alleged Virginia footage versus rare vision VHS filter. This was probably the app used to simulate a 1996 VHS. Uh, and you can see that the filter is a lock. I mean, that is basically it. I mean, maybe ex that, that may be exactly it. Uh, I'll blow it up so you can see it. Uh, and that sure looks like it, right? So that seems to indicate that the... Uh, that there, that at the very least, uh, the uh, footage that we saw of the Virginia being was manipulated to look like an older footage, which probably means the entire thing is BS. Now, there is a long webpage that you can go to about the Skinny Bob alien. Uh, now, there is a filter placed on uh, the Skinny Bob footage, but there is a, that website, uh, and you can find it. I don't remember it offhand. Uh, goes into a lengthy description about why the Skinny Bob footage is still legitimate 
even with this filter applied to it. I don't know enough uh, about filters or uh, the technology behind all of that to make a decision on that, uh, but I just uh, you know bring that up uh, for your consideration. Uh, I, I think that this, the Virginia footage is probably BS, but hey, you never know. And if the Skinny Bob video is real, even with the filter applied to it, hey, who knows? But probably BS, and we can probably cross that one off the list. Meanwhile, Raytheon is building two ultra-high power uh, directed energy weapons for the U.S. Navy and Air Force. Raytheon has been tasked with designing, building, and testing a pair of directed energy weapons for the U.S. Navy and Air Force. Unlike cutting-edge laser systems that use the power of light to, to down airborne threats, the new weapons will use ultra-powerful microwave emitters to fry the electronics of attacking drones, missiles, and other electronically guided ordnance. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Raytheon is uh, developing energy weapons. Uh, we are moving into a, a brave and scary new world. Meanwhile, people are calling out Susan Goh and Sean Kirkpatrick and the close connection uh, between the Pentagon spokeswoman uh, and the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, let's listen to what Lou had to say on Disclosure Tonight. Susan Goh. And Susan Goh's background uh, is a Fulbright colonel in the reserves. Okay, so... Great, thank you for your service. But it happens to be in psychological operations, mm -hmm. psyops. And not only is it in psyops, but she actually wrote a report that is public. Um, you should you should read it. Where towards the end, one of the one of the things she says is it is impossible to separate the duties of a a public relations officer from that of psychological operations and misinformation, right? And deception. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me, even though it is illegal, you are conducting psychological operations against the American people in your roles and responsibilities as a PAO for the Pentagon? Hmm. Yeah. Um, that is not the America that I know. No. And I don't no. think it's the America that most people expect. And so my, my, I guess my advice for Mrs. Go would be to find a nice retirement home somewhere, um, hopefully far away from a whole lot of people. And, um, you know, uh, don't have social media. Go. <laughs> don't even and have Susan social media. I love it. You tell them, Lou. You tell them. What does this have to do with uh, uh, Sean Kirkpatrick? Uh, well, you've probably all seen this picture of the dapper, uh, lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, this is, uh, okay, let's, who posted this? This is Adam Coldstock. Uh, I, I attended Kirkpatrick's last public event as Aero Director. Uh, okay, the, yeah, during the reception, he mingled with the crowd. The problem was his mingling included a shadow by Pentagon spokesperson Susan Goh, who never left his side for a full hour, even if anyone tried to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the good scientist. It was eerily reminiscent of a Soviet-era minder. He literally paused and looked at her to see if he'd get a nod or a head shake before he answered some questions a friend and I had. The answers he did offer were rife with doublespeak, patronizing dismissals, wordplay, and semantics. That is the science being discussed here. What a joke. Thank you for calling us out, Dr. Travis Taylor. Uh, so yeah, there you go, uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick and his uh, equally lovely uh, handler, this is a Pentagon spokeswoman, uh, Susan Go, And you've already heard what Lou Elizondo had to say about her. And of course, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick is a big fat liar and knows about UFOs, and I've talked about this a lot. Uh, it's, it's not like this is anything new to him. This is, you know, uh, Brandon Fugel uh, talking about Sean Kirkpatrick and... Um, uh, Sean, when he met with the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, uh, Sean said, wait, before we proceed any further, I want to establish an understanding. All the gentlemen here, Mr. Fugel, that you're presenting to are all very well aware of the reality of UFO phenomena. So please dispense with any part of your presentation that would seek to convince us of the reality because we already know. 
uh, yeah, who said that? Uh, the individuals, and that was, of course, the lovely, lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. And the reason I had to uh, play that on mute was because there was music in the background. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a quote that I've played before, and there's other uh, information as well to suggest that Sean Kirkpatrick uh, knows all about UFOs. And indeed, he is a an agent of the UFO control group uh, and may have, in fact, worked on UFO technology himself. He's certainly been associated with people that have. So yeah, he is just a flat out disinformation agent and likely an old hand at UFOs. Meanwhile, what about human looking aliens? Well, Richard Dolan was on uh, Jeffrey Mishlove the other day, New Thinking Aloud, uh, one of my favorite podcasts around, and uh, they were talking about that very thing. It's one of the things that fascinates me most is the Nordics or Pleiadians, uh, whatever you want to call them, these beings that appear to look human. Well, how is that possible? How does that make any sense at all? Well, here's Richard's thoughts on the matter. It raises the question of aliens among us. Aliens with complete human appearance, although obviously uh, greater telepathic ability. You, you report his observations and, and a couple of others in, in your book, and, and, and you say, we, we need to take this seriously. We, we absolutely do. Uh, you, you know, if, if it's just one case, a couple of cases here and there, you might have the luxury of, of dismissing it and living within your uh, reality box still. But when you get case after case, some of which have come to me directly, and then there's countless others that are out there of per perfectly human looking beings who seem to have this capability that don't seem like they're from here, uh, then I feel it's incumbent on me to take them seriously. Uh, and it's actually, you know, the more I've, I've thought about it, the more it makes sense to me that this would be the case. Um, it doesn't mean I mean that these human looking beings are actually from another world. They could be directly from here. They could be absolutely genetically part of the human race that developed here on earth. But why would it be impossible that an alien group from elsewhere would come here and recognize okay, our biology is really not well suited for Earth. Wrong gravity, wrong solar radiation, wrong microbes, all of those things would make it difficult for them. Well, what might they do? Work with Earth-based genetic organisms, modify them for their purposes to work for them on that basis. And why not simply take the leading species on the planet, these human beings, take a few of them, breed them for yourself, genetically enhance them as you wish and have them work for your society. How is that so difficult to fact? Yeah, it could be, Richard. Totally could be. I, I don't really buy that explanation. I mean, I, lo I love you, Richard, but I'm not quite buying that. Uh, I think there's you know various reasons why we could have human-looking aliens. One, obviously, is hybrids, and that's kind of what Richard is suggesting in a way here. Uh, but the hybrids that I'm familiar with, or you know, the research I'm aware that is done uh, about hybrids and the experiencers that have given birth to hybrids, uh, it's all part of the abduction phenomenon, and uh, they are they are you know created or bred, if you will, uh, and live here on Earth. At least the human-looking ones and the uh, less human ones look uh, live on the the UFOs. Uh, but that's simply the hybrids. That doesn't really discuss uh, the Nordics or Pleiadians, whatever you want to call them, the human-looking aliens. They have their own culture or from somewhere else. Uh, and there are these highly advanced beings that don't seem to be the hybrids. Uh, they, they seem to be a distinct race or class uh, of non-human. Uh, and there's various theories about that. And people that have interacted with them have different thoughts about that. Uh, you know, here's uh, Michael Masters. Uh, talking about it and you know his experience and you know I've already played his his story before and I'm not going to play it again but uh, you know he talks about uh, how in his own experience uh, he got the impression they were humans from the future so could that be a reason why we have human looking aliens that are highly advanced technologically well possibly possibly I mean they they present themselves as being from another planet uh, with the no, their own distinct culture and everything. 
Could they be humans from the from the future who move to that planet and who develop their own distinct culture? Well, entirely possible, entirely possible. However, a lot of these human-looking non-humans, if we can say that, uh, don't look very human. Uh, they they look uh, they look more alien, and sometimes they seem to have the ability to shape shift. Uh, Dick Allgaier, who was interacting with one through a remote viewing session, uh, was seeing it shapeshift uh, into a what he called a cat man. And he called it the cat man. And he was, uh, the, um, you know, he was actually able to interact with this being. And he, he's a very accomplished remote viewer, Dick Allgaier, part of the future forecasting team. And not, that's not to say that all his uh, information is, is correct or, or any, any remote viewers. Uh, but uh, Dad Smith also viewed the same incident. It was the Phoenix Lights incident, and they were both seeing this being, seeming to corroborate each other's uh, viewings. Um, and they're you know, they're both very good viewers, and so they were they were getting this being, and Dick was actually able to interact with him, and he was this higher dimensional being who was uh, you know manifesting into our reality. Now Dick wasn't given any inf any information about why he appeared to be human was he simply making himself appear human because dick was human or he was on earth uh you know he was in the the phoenix lights craft and uh you know when you go to earth uh, uh do as the romans do right look like a roman so is that what's going on they are simply representing themselves as humans when really they are cat people or whatever or perhaps they don't have any uh, solid shape in our reality because they don't come from our reality maybe they do come from a higher dimension and they are simply manifesting into our 3d reality uh, but really they exist outside of space and time as we know it uh, that may sound wild and crazy to you guys but it doesn't sound wild and crazy to me uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Why do some of these beings look human? Are they Vikings that have been transplanted, as Richard Dolan suggests? Are they uh, people from the future, as Mike Masters suggests? Are they higher dimensional beings that uh, are manifesting into re our reality? Or something completely different? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Last but not least, check this out. This is from a few days ago uh, from BreakingDefense.com. Uh, the DOD completely rewrites classification policy for secret space programs. What? Uh, Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks has signed off on a new classification policy for space programs that discourages the use of special access program sat status that dramatically limits clearances to a handful of U.S. officials in hopes of opening still secret programs to more stakeholders, including U.S. allies and industry partners, according to a senior official. What the classification memo does generally is it overwrites, it really completely rewrites a legacy document that had its roots 20 years ago and it's just no longer applicable to the current environment that involves national security space. DOD Assistant Secretary for Space Policy John Plum told reporters today, uh, while the specifics of the policy signed off by Hicks at the end of 2023 are themselves classified, uh, it's kind of funny, uh, Plum explained that a key issue has been the overuse of SAPs that not only have limited the ab ab ability, I can say that word, uh, to share with allies and industry, but even among different organizations within the Defense Department. So anything we can bring from an SAP level to a top secret level, for example, brings massive value to the warfighter, massive value to the department. And frankly, my hope is over time, it will also allow us to share more information with allies and partners that they might not currently be able to share. Wow. Uh, you know, assigning minimum classifications to a various number of things. So that's crazy. So they are going to uh, hopefully make it easier to get information about these secret space programs, and they might even be willing to share more of it with the public. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm dreaming, dreaming here, guys, but uh, isn't that amazing that that is a possibility that that is uh, going forward right now? 
uh, with uh, these minimum classification uh, guidelines, these new guidelines. Uh, I think that's that's incredible and uh, potentially very encouraging. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Are they going to spill the beans? Are they going to open up their secret space programs and all their secrets? Uh, I can say that. Okay, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, please consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt. See the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.